The Apostle John's Revelation Unfolded Appendix 1 The Apocalypse of John the Beloved The Revelation of John, a servant of God, which was given unto him of Jesus Christ, to show unto those who believe on his name things which must shortly come to pass. And God sent and signified it by his Son unto John, who bore record of the word of God, and who beareth testimony of Jesus Christ, who gave unto him the word. And John, a witness in the flesh of Christ, testifieth of all things that he saw. Blessed are they who read and understand the words of this prophecy, and keep the commandments of God, for these shall understand those things which are written therein. For the time of the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Now this is the testimony of John to the servants of the seven churches which are in Asia, or in other words, all the servants of God upon the earth grace be unto you, and peace from him who is, and who was, and who is to come, and who hath been sent forth from before the throne of God to testify unto those who are the servants of the seven churches which are in the world. Therefore, first John, a faithful witness, bear record of the things which were delivered me of the angel of God, who is Jesus Christ, the first begotten of the Father in the flesh, and he who was risen first from the dead, and who shall overcome Lucifer, the prince of the kings of the earth. And unto him who loved us, giving us of the glory of the Father by providing the way whereby we might be washed from our sins, because of his own blood, which was shed as an example to us that we might have his Spirit to be with us always, and who hath power to make us kings and priests unto God, his Father, and to the Father be glory and dominion for ever and ever. Amen. Behold, he cometh in the clouds with tens of thousands of his saints from the kingdom of God, clothed with the glory of his Father. And every eye shall see him, and they also who pierced him and rejected the word that he gave unto them by his own mouth, and by the mouths of his seven servants, which he hath sent unto the seven churches. And all kindreds of the earth who worship the prince of the kings of the earth shall wail because of him. Even so, Amen. For he saith, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the ending. And thus saith the Lord, who is, and who was, and who is to come, the anointed one of the Almighty, called by him to save the world. First John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and who also belongeth to the church of the Lamb of God, which is the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, was in the isle that is called Patmos, having been exiled from the world for the word of God which I have given to the world, and also for the testimony which I have given of Jesus Christ, he who gave the word unto me. I was in the Spirit pondering upon the word of the Lord, and heard behind me a great voice, as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the ending, the Lord who is, and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. Greetings, my friend. Unto thee shall be given that which none other of thy brethren hath known, even those things which shall come to pass before I come again upon the earth to take the throne which my Father hath given me. And what thou sayest, write in a book as the Spirit shall command thee, writing that which hath been sealed, so that it shall remain sealed unto all those who are not called by my name. Behold, thou shalt send it unto the seven churches which are in Asia, unto Ephesus, and unto Smyrna, and unto Pergamos, and unto Thyatira, and unto Sardis, and unto Philadelphia, and unto Laodicea. For behold, these are the churches of men who have strayed from my ordinances and broken my everlasting covenant. Therefore, they shall not have these things given unto them in plainness, that they might be tried in their faith concerning me. And as I turned again to see the voice that spake with me, I beheld a vision. And in the vision I saw seven golden candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven candlesticks was the Son of Man, of whom I bore record of to the world, being one of his eyewitnesses in the flesh. And he was clothed with a garment down to the foot, and girt about the paps with a golden girdle. 
His head and his hairs were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, for any who looked upon them in unrighteousness would burn from within. And his arms and his feet like unto fine brass, as if they were burned in a furnace, and his voice as the sound of many waters. And he had in his right hand seven stars, which he kept always before him. And out of his mouth went a sharp two-edged sword that slew all those who came forth, except those who he held in his right hand. And his countenance was as the sun which shineth in its strength. And when I saw him, I fell at his feet as if I were dead. And I dared not look upon him, knowing the wickedness of my ways. And he laid his right hand upon me, saying unto me, Fear not. I am the first and the last. I am he that liveth, and was dead, and behold, I am alive for evermore. Amen. And have the keys of hell and of death, which is the sword that thou sawest proceeding forth from my mouth. And thy sins are forgiven thee. Write the things which thou hast seen, and also the things which thou shalt see, which are the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter, even that which shall befall thy people of the latter days. Behold, the mystery of the seven stars which thou sawest in my right hand, and the seven golden candlesticks the seven stars are the servants of God of the seven churches, which are the righteous of the world. And the seven candlesticks which thou sawest are the seven nations of the world wherein the servants shall dwell and shine and give their light unto the world. Unto the servant of the church of Ephesus write these things saith he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are evil, and how thou hatest them who belong to the church of the devil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles of the Lamb, and are not, and hast found them liars because of their works, which are evil. And thou hast borne, and hast patience, and for my name's sake hast labored, and hast not fainted. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against those whom thou servest, because they have left their first love, because of the anger they have for their enemies, who are not of thee. Preach repentance unto them, saying, Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen. And repent, and do the first works which were given thee by thy first love, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will remove my servants out of their place. And I will remove the light from upon thy candlestick, except thou repent. But this thou hast in thy favor the hate that thou hast is for the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. For they take that which is good and make it evil, and that which is evil they make good. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches to him that overcometh the works of this world will I give to eat of the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And the paradise of God is the eternal happiness of his kingdom. And unto the servant of the church in Smyrna write these things saith he who teacheth his will to the first and the last, even he who was dead, and is now alive, I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. But thou art rich as to the things of God, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews, and are not but are of the church of the devil whose desires are the appetites of the flesh. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer in the flesh. Behold, the servants of the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that ye may be tried and tested in your faith. And ye shall have tribulation. But be ye steadfast, as they who restrain from eating the food and wine of the king for ten days. And ye shall become strong in the spirit, as they did who received the crown of life. And if thou art faithful unto death, I will give thee also a crown of life. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. He that overcometh the things of this world shall not be heard of the second death, which shall come upon all those who eat the food of the kings of this world. 
And to the servant of the church in Pergamos write these things saith he who hath the sharp sword with two edges that proceedeth forth from his mouth, and cuts asunder those who deny him and do not the works of God, I know thy works, and where thy heart dwellest. Even when thou dwellest where Satan's seat is, thou hearest me, and thou holdest fast my name, and hast not denied me in thy faith, even as in those days wherein Antipas was my faithful martyr, who was slain among you, where Satan dwelleth and exorciseth his power. Yeah, even then, thou didst not betray me. But I have a few things against thee, because thou hast there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, and envy those things he offered unto Balak, to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, commanding them to eat things sacrificed unto idols, and to commit fornication with unbelievers. So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which thing I hate. For thou knowest that I esteem all flesh the same, and no man is above another, for I am no respecter of persons. Repent, or else I will come unto thee quickly, and will fight against them that are of the Nicolaitans with the sword of my mouth. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches to him that overcometh the flesh of this world, will I give to eat of the hidden manna, which is that which shall save them. Not as it did their fathers in the wilderness, for they are dead, but unto him who receiveth this manna, I shall give eternal life. And I will give him a white stone, which shall be a light unto perfection to those who receive it. And in the stone a new name shall be written, which no man knoweth saving he that receiveth it. And unto the servant of the church in Thyatira write these things saith the Son of God, who hath eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass, I know thy works. Yeah, I know that they are full of charity and service and faith. And thy patience I have seen, and thy works I have also seen, and the last to be more than the first, and this because thy works are many. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman dressed in scarlet, even the whore of all the earth, who is as Jezebel who killed the prophets, who called herself a prophetess so that she could teach and seduce my servants to commit fornication with her, and to eat things sacrificed unto the idols who are her gods. And I shall give her and those who sleep in her bed space to repent of their fornication. And if they do not repent, behold, those who are in her bed, and them who commit adultery with her, I will cast into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And I will kill her children with death, yea, they shall be cut asunder by the sword of my mouth. And all the churches shall know that I am he who searcheth the reins and desires of the heart. And I will give unto every one of you according to your works and the desires of your hearts. But unto those of you who are righteous, I say, and also unto the rest in Thyatira, even as many as have not followed this doctrine and committed fornication with this woman dressed in scarlet, and which have not known the depths of the ways of Satan, even as she speaks as if his ways are good to seduce you, but they are not, behold, I will put upon you none other burden except that which I have already commanded you. But that which ye have already from me, hold fast till I come. And to him that overcometh, and keepeth my commandments unto the end, to him will I give the power to live in my kingdoms. And I shall rule over them with the word of God, and they shall be in my hands as the vessels of clay in the hands of a potter. And he shall receive this power by faith, given with equity and justice even as I received of my Father, and do his will. But those who do not overcome, their vessels shall be broken to shivers. And I will give those who have overcome all that I have, even all that the Father hath given me, the bright and morning star. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And unto the servant of the church in Sardis write, these things saith he who hath the seven stars, which are the seven servants of God, I know thy works, that thou hast declared a name by which thou livest that can give thee eternal life, but thou art dead. 
Be watchful, therefore, and strengthen those who remain with thee, who are ready to die because they know not the name by which they are called, and whose works I have not found perfect before God. Remember, therefore, how thou hast received and heard the name thou hast been given, and hold fast to the rod of truth I have given you, and repent of thy slothful ways. Watch and prepare for my coming. But if therefore thou shalt not watch, I will come on thee as a thief, for thou shalt not know what hour I will come upon thee. Thou hast a few who remember their names, even in Sardis, who have not defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white raiment, for they are worthy and are called by my name. He that overcometh the world, the same shall be clothed in white raiment. And I will not blot out his name out of the book of life, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things saith he that is holy, he that speaketh truth, he that hath the key of the house of David, which openeth, and no man shutteth, and shutteth, and no man openeth, I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, which I have unlocked with the key, and no man can shut it. I have unlocked it and opened it up for thee, for thou hast a little strength, but hast kept my word, and hast not denied my name. Nevertheless, there are those among you who envy the key which I have given unto thee, and they pretend to be with thee, but they are not. Behold, I will make them of the synagogue of Satan, which say they are of the house of Israel, but are not, but do lie. Behold, I will not give them the key, but I shall give unto thee a crown, and make them to come and worship before thy feet, and to know that I have loved thee. Because thou hast kept my word with patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world, to try them that dwell upon the earth. For Satan shall be loosed, and a key given unto those who follow him, that they may unlock the chains by which he has been bound. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast been given of me, that no man take thy crown. For him that overcometh, will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall dwell in this sanctuary, and go no more out. And I will write upon him the name of my God, and he shall dwell in the city of my God, which is the new Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God. And I will write upon him the new name, which no man shall know saving he that receiveth it. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write these things saith he who hath the final word, who is the faithful and true witness of this word, which word was in the beginning of the creation of God, I know thy works, and from thy cup I cannot drink, because thou offerest a drink unto me that is neither cold nor hot. I would that thou would bring forth a drink offering of cold or hot. So then, because thou offerest that which is lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew it out of my mouth. For thou sayest, because of the blessings of the Lord I am rich with gold and fine raiment, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, but thou knowest not that thou art wretched, and miserable, because thou art poor, and blind, and naked. I counsel thee to buy of me that gold which is tried in the fire, that thou mayest be rich. And purchase of me without price white raiment, that thou mayest be clothed, so that the shame of thy nakedness does not appear. And anoint thine eyes with my eye salve, that thou mayest see. And behold, thus saith the Lord unto all the churches, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Be zealous therefore, and repent. Behold, I stand at the door, and knock. If any man upon hearing my voice shall open the door, I will come into him, and will sup with him, and he with me. To him that overcometh the sins of this world, will I grant to sit with me in my kingdom, even so it shall be as I also overcame, and am set down with my Father in his kingdom. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. 
After this, I looked, and still in the vision, I beheld. And it appeared as if a door was opened in heaven. And I heard again the first voice, which was as it were of a trumpet talking with me, which said, Come up hither, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. And immediately, I was taken in the spirit and beheld a throne set high in heaven. And one sat on the throne. And I looked and saw near unto the throne, another who sat, and was to look upon like a sardine and jasper stone, and also like unto an emerald. And I saw as it were the appearance of fire, and it shone in brightness as a rainbow round about the throne. And in the midst of the throne were four and twenty seats. And upon the seats I saw four and twenty elders sitting, clothed in white raiment. And they had on their heads crowns of gold. And out of the throne proceeded four beasts. And lightnings and thunderings and voices came out of seven lamps of fire burning before the throne in the midst of the four beasts, which each gives its light to the seven servants of God. And before the throne there appeared a sea like unto a looking glass of crystal, and it was in the midst of the throne where the four and twenty elders sat. And round about the throne were the four beasts full of eyes before and behind. And each beast had the likeness of four faces, the first was like a lion, and the second like a calf, and the third like a face as a man, and the fourth was like a flying eagle. And the four beasts had each of them four wings about him. And they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day and night, saying, Holy, 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 Lord God Almighty, which was, and is, and is to come. And when those beasts give this glory and honor and thanks to him that sat on the throne, who liveth for ever and ever, the four and twenty elders fall down before him that sat on the throne, and worship him that liveth for ever and ever, and cast their crowns before the throne, saying, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne the book of life. And it was full of words written within and on the backside, and sealed with seven seals. And I saw the four beasts, who are the angels of God in their power, proclaiming with a loud voice as if it were a trumpet, who is worthy to open the book, and to loose the seals thereof. And no man in heaven above the earth, neither below the earth, was able to open the book, neither to look thereon. And I wept much, because no man was found worthy to open and to read the book, neither to look thereon. And one of the elders saith unto me, Weep not. Behold, the lion of the tribe of Judah, the root of David, hath been prepared to open the book, and to loose the seven seals thereof. And I beheld, and lo, in the midst of the throne and the four beasts stood the elders and a lamb as if it were to be slain, having twelve horns and twelve eyes, which of the twelve servants of God sent forth into all the earth. And he who was prepared came and took the book out of the right hand of him that sat upon the throne. And when he had taken the book, the four beasts rejoiced, and the four and twenty elders fell down before the lamb, having every one of them harps, and golden vials full of the smoke of incense, which are the prayers of saints. And they sung a new song, saying, Thou art worthy to take the book, and to open the seals thereof. For thou wast prepared as a lamb to be slain, to redeem us to God out of every kindred, and tongue, and people, and nation by thy sweat and blood. And thou hast the power to exalt us, and make us kings and priests unto our God and we shall inherit the kingdom God upon earth. And I beheld, and I heard the voice of many spirits round about the throne where the beasts were and where the elders stood. And the number of them was ten thousand times ten thousand, and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb that is to be slain to receive this power from God, to give unto us the riches of life and wisdom and strength. And we will forever give him honor and glory for this blessing. 
and every creature which is above the earth, and on the earth, and under the earth, and such as are in the sea, and all that are with them, heard I saying, Honor and glory be unto him who hath blessed us, and who in power sitteth upon the throne, and hath given unto us the Lamb, glory to him for ever and ever. And the four beasts said, Amen. And the four and twenty elders with the golden vials fell down and worshipped him that liveth for ever and ever. And when the Lamb opened one of the seals, I saw and heard as it were the noise of thunder, and one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and beheld a white horse upon the earth, and he that sat on him had a crown given unto him, and around and about the crown appeared a rainbow, and he went forth conquering, and to be conquered. And when he had opened the second seal, I heard the second beast say, Come and see. And there went out upon the earth another horse that was red. And a crown of power was given to him that sat thereon to take peace from the earth, and there was given unto him a great sword, because it was allowed that they should kill one another. And when he had opened the third seal, I heard the third beast say, Come and see. And I beheld, and lo, a black horse went forth upon the earth. And he that sat on him had a pair of balances in his hand. And I heard a voice that came from the throne which was in the midst of the four beasts say, Let them sell a measure of wheat for a penny, and three measures of barley for a penny, for thou sayest that they hurt not the oil and the wine. And when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast say, Come and see. And I looked, and beheld a pale horse upon the earth. And his name that sat on him was Death, and Hell followed with him. And power was given unto them over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword, and with hunger, and with death, and with the beasts of the earth. And when he had opened the fifth seal, I saw the souls of them upon the earth who were slain upon the altar for the word of God, and for the testimony which they held. And the four and twenty elders cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Lord, holy and true, dost thou not judge them that dwell on the earth and avenge their blood, which has been spilt upon the altar? And white robes were given unto every one of them who were sacrificed upon the altar. And it was said unto them that they should rest yet for a little season, until their fellow servants and their brethren, who would also be killed upon the altar as they were, should fulfill their works. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake, and the earth reeled to and fro like a drunkard. And the sun became black, clothed in a sackcloth made of hair, because the moon was turned into blood. And the stars of heaven fell unto the earth because of the great earthquake, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And it came to pass that the heavens opened as a scroll is opened when it is rolled together, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place because of that which was written therein. And the kings of the earth, and the great men, and the rich men, and the chief captains, and the mighty men, yea, even every man who bringeth bondage upon another who is not free, hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains. And these said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us, and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne, and from the wrath of the Lamb, whose countenance we cannot bear. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who among us shall be able to stand? And after these things, I saw four angels ascending from the east standing on the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. And I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God to give to those who overcome the world. And he cried with a loud voice to the other four angels, to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea by the winds which they held, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. And I heard the number of them which were sealed in their foreheads with the name of the Father. And they were among all the nations of the earth, 
and there were sealed an hundred and forty and four thousand of all the scattered tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Judah were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Reuben were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Gad were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Azur were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Nephthalim were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Manasses were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Simeon were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Levi were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Issachar were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Zabulon were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Joseph were sealed twelve thousand. Of the tribe of Benjamin were sealed twelve thousand. After this I beheld, and lo, this great multitude, which no man could number, of all nations and kindreds and people and tongues, stood before the throne and before the Lamb, clothed with white robes and palms in their hands, and cried with a loud voice, saying, Salvation to our God who sitteth upon the throne, and unto the Lamb whom he hath given to us. And this great multitude stood with the elders and the Lamb round about the throne, and about the four beasts, who were the angels of God. And they fell before the throne on their faces, and worshipped God, saying, Glory and thanksgiving and honor we give unto our God for ever and ever, for his blessings and wisdom and power and might. Amen. And one of the elders spake unto me, saying, Who are these who are arrayed in white robes? And from whence did they come? And I said unto him, Sir, thou knowest. And he said to me, These are they who came out of great tribulation, and have washed their own robes, and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. Therefore they are before the throne of God, and serve him day and night in his kingdom. And he that sitteth on the throne shall dwell with them. They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall they need the sun to give them light nor any heat. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. For the Lamb which is in their midst and before the throne shall feed them, and shall lead them unto living fountains of waters. And before he had opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven about the space of half an hour. And during the silence, I saw seven angels who stood before God, and to them were given seven trumpets to sound. And another angel came from upon the earth, and stood at the altar, having a golden censer filled with much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all saints upon the golden altar which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense from the golden censer, which came with the prayers of the saints, ascended up before God out of the angel's hand. And he who sat upon the throne turned away because of the burnt incense before him. And the angel took the censer, and filled it with fire from the altar, and cast it into the earth. And it was filled with voices, and thunderings, and lightnings, and these caused a great earthquake. And when the censer was emptied upon the earth, the seven angels which had the seven trumpets prepared themselves to sound. The first angel sounded, and there followed hail, and fire mingled with the hail, which appeared as blood, and they were cast upon the earth. And the third part of trees was burnt up, and all green grass was burnt up. And the second angel sounded, and as it were, a great mountain burning with fire was cast into the sea. And the third part of the sea became blood. And the third part of the creatures which were in the sea that and had life died. And the third part of the ships were destroyed. And the third angel sounded, and there had fallen a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And it fell upon the third part of the rivers, and upon the fountains of waters. And the name of the star is called Wormwood. And the third part of the waters from the rivers and the fountains became Wormwood. And many men died of the waters, because they were made bitter. And the fourth angel sounded, and the third part of the sun was smitten, and the third part of the moon, and the third part of the stars. And because a third part of them was darkened, 
the day shone not for a third part of it, and the night likewise received no light. And I beheld, and heard an angel flying through the midst of heaven, saying with a loud voice, Woe, 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 to the inhabitants of the earth, by reason of the other voices of the trumpets of the three angels, which are yet to sound. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw as it were, a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given great power, and the key to the bottomless pit, which was dubbed by those upon the earth. And when he had unlocked the bottomless pit and opened it, there arose a smoke out of the pit. And the sun and the air were darkened by reason of the smoke made by a great furnace in the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts, and they went out upon the earth. And unto them was given power, and their power was in their tails, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to the locusts it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented five months until they are healed from their hurt. And their torment was as the torment from the tail of a scorpion when he strike the man. And in those days shall men seek relief from their torment, and shall not find it. And because of the torment, they shall desire to die, but they shall find no relief, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses, and their riders were prepared unto battle. And on the heads of the riders were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had long hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of young lions. And they had breastplates, as it were breastplates of iron. And the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to battle. And they had tails like unto scorpions, and there were stings in their tails which hurt the men upon the earth. And their power was to hurt men five months. And they had a king who ruled over them, which is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon. But in the Greek tongue hath his name Apollyon. One woe is past. And behold, there come two woes more hereafter. And before the sixth angel sounded, I heard a voice come from between the four horns of the golden altar which is before God, saying to the sixth angel which had the trumpet, Sound the warning that the four angels which are still bound in the bottomless pit which is near unto the great river Euphrates shall be loose. And the key was given to the sixth angel to loose the four angels bound in the bottomless pit, which were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, for to slay the third part of men. And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and their end I could not see. But I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision. And them that sat on them rode thereupon, having breastplates of fire and of jacinth and brimstone. And the heads of the horses were as the heads of lions, and out of their mouths issued fire and smoke and brimstone. By these three was the third part of men killed by the fire and by the smoke and by the brimstone, which issued out of their mouths. For their power is in their mouth and in their tails. For their tails were like unto serpents, and each of their tails had heads, and with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men which were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship devils, and idols of gold, and silver, and brass, and stone, and of wood, which neither can see, nor hear, nor walk. Neither did they repent of their murders, nor of their sorceries, nor of their fornication, nor of their thefts. And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed as it were with a cloud in the day of rain. And he appeared as if he were covered that all upon the earth could not see his face. And a rainbow shone from the crown which was upon his head, and his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And from his countenance came forth a great light upon the earth. 
and he had in his hand a little book open, which contained that which was sealed from the foundation of the earth. And he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot on the earth, even that his whole countenance did fill the earth, even that there was not a part thereof that was not filled with his light. And he opened the seventh seal, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth and mocketh all afraid. And when he had cried, it was as if seven thunders uttered their voices. And when the seven thunders had uttered their voices, I was about to write that which they spoke. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Seal up those things which the seven thunders uttered, and write them not. For these things shall not come forth unto the children of men until the end of times. And the mighty angel which I saw stand upon the sea and upon the earth, lifted up his hand to heaven, and sware by him that liveth for ever and ever, who created heaven, and the things that therein are, and the earth, and the things that therein are, and the sea, and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer, for the time, times, and half of time have passed. And thus I heard the voice of the seventh thunder speak. But in the days of the voice of the seventh trumpet, when it shall begin to sound, then shall the mystery of God be revealed, as he hath declared to his servants the prophets. And the voice which I heard from heaven spake unto me again, and said, Go and take the little book which was sealed with the seven seals, and is now opened in the hand of the angel which standeth upon the sea and upon the earth. And I went unto the angel, and said unto him, Give me the little book. And he said unto me, Take it, and eat it up. And it shall make thy belly bitter, but it shall be in thy mouth sweet as honey. And I took the little book out of the angel's hand, and ate it up. And it was in my mouth sweet as honey, for that which I read brought much joy to my soul. But as soon as I had eaten it, my belly was bitter. And he said unto me, Thou must prophesy again, before many peoples and nations and tongues and kings. And the angel gave me a reed like unto a rod, and said unto me, Rise, and measure the temple of God, and the altar, and them that worship therein. But the court which is without the temple, leave out, and measure it not, for it is given unto the Gentiles to measure. And when they measure it, they shall tread the holy city under foot forty and two months. And I have given power unto my two witnesses that they may prophesy. But during the thousand two hundred and threescore days, they shall prophesy clothed in sackcloth. These witnesses are the two olive trees, and the two candlesticks standing before the altar of God upon the earth. And if any man will hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth, and devoureth their enemies. And if any man will hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. These witnesses have power to shut heaven, that it rain not in the days of their prophecy. And they have power over the waters to turn them to blood, and to smite the earth with all plagues, as often as they will. And when they shall give their testimony, the beast that ascendeth out of the bottomless pit shall make war against them, and shall overcome them, and kill them. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. And they of the people and kindreds and tongues and nations of the earth shall see their dead bodies three days and a an half, and shall not suffer their dead bodies to be put in graves. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them, and make merry, and shall send gifts one to another, because these two prophets are dead which tormented them that dwelt on the earth. And after three days and a an half, the spirit of life from God entered into them, and they stood upon their feet, and great fear fell upon them which saw them. And they which saw them heard a great voice from heaven saying unto the two witnesses, Come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud, and their enemies beheld them. And the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell in the earthquake. And there were saved of men seven thousand. And this remnant was affrighted, and gave glory to the God of heaven. 
The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe cometh quickly. And when the seventh angel sounded, there were great voices in heaven, saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our God, and of his Christ, and he shall reign for ever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces, and worshipped God, saying, We give thee thanks, O Lord God Almighty, which art, and wast, and art to come because thou hast taken to thee thy great power, and hast sent thy Christ to reign upon the earth. And the nations were angry because thou hast come. And the time of the dead hast come, that they should be judged as the living. And that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that reverence thy name, both small and great, and shouldest destroy the power of them who destroy the earth. And the temple of God was opened in heaven, and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. And there were lightnings and voices and thunderings, and an earthquake and great hail. And there appeared a great sign in heaven showing those things as they are upon the earth. And I saw a woman clothed in a robe as if it were the sun, and the moon under her feet, and upon her head there was a crown of twelve stars. And the woman was with child, and was crying and traveling in birth, being pained to be delivered. And there appeared before my eyes another sign given in heaven in likeness of things upon the earth. And I beheld a great red dragon, which was the serpent which I saw that had power over the bottomless pit. And the serpent had seven heads and ten horns, and seven crowns upon his heads. And with his tail... He drew after him the third part of the stars, which were upon the crown worn by the woman. And the dragon took the crown from the woman and cast it to the earth. And the dragon stood before the woman, who was ready to be delivered, to devour her child after it was born. And she brought forth a man-child, who was to rule all nations with a rod of iron. And before the dragon could devour the child, it was caught up, and taken unto God, and to his throne. And the woman fled into the wilderness, where there was a place prepared by God for her. And I saw the four and twenty elders, and the four beasts standing before the woman, and it was given them that they should feed her there a thousand two hundred and threescore days. And there appeared another sign in heaven in the likeness of a war being waged both in heaven and upon the earth. And Michael and his angels fought against the dragon, and the dragon and his angels fought against Michael. And at the end of the battle, the dragon and his angels prevailed not against Michael or the child or the woman. And the place which had been given to the dragon and his angels was not found any more in heaven or on earth. And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent, called Lucifer, the devil, who was also called Satan which deceiveth the whole world. He was cast out of heaven and also out of the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. And I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, Now has come salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ to the earth. For the accuser of men is cast out, which caused them to accuse him before our God day and night. For they have gained victory, and overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, and by the word of their testimony which they have borne. For they loved not their own lives, but kept the testimony of the word even unto death. Rejoice, ye that dwell in the heavens and upon the earth. And after I had beheld these things, I heard another voice saying, The time of rejoicing is not yet, because the devil still reigneth upon the earth. Therefore, woe to the inhabitants of the earth and they who dwell upon the islands of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you, having great wrath, because he knoweth he shall be conquered, and that he hath but a short time. And when the dragon saw that he was to be overcome and cast out of the earth, he pursued the woman which brought forth the man-child to torment her. Therefore, the elders and the beasts which stood before the woman gave her two wings of a great eagle that she might fly into the wilderness, into a place prepared for her, 
where she is nourished for a time, and times, and half a time, safe from the face of the serpent. And the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a great river after the woman, that he might cause her to be carried away because of the flood. And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. And because the earth helped the woman, the dragon was wroth with her, and went to make war with the remnant of her seed who were not drowned in the flood, and who keep the commandments of God, and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. And I saw another sign in heaven in likeness of the kingdoms of the earth. And I saw a beast rise up out of the sea, and stand upon the sand of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns, and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast which I saw was like unto a leopard, and his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power, and his seat, and great authority. And I saw one of his heads as if it were wounded even unto death, but his deadly wound was healed. And all the world wondered after the beast and bowed down before him. And they worshipped the dragon which gave power unto the beast. And they praised the beast, saying, Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him? And there was given unto him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God, to blaspheme his name, and his tabernacle, and them that dwell in heaven. And it was given unto him to make war with the saints, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. And all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life of the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leteth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. And he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. And he exorciseth all the power of the first beast before him, and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed. And he doeth great wonders, so that he mocketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of the beast. And them that dwell on the earth are deceived by the means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, by saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword, and did live. And he had power to give life unto the image of the beast, that the image of the beast should both speak, and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he causeth all, both righteous and wicked, small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand, or in their foreheads, and that no man might buy or sell, save he that had the mark, or the name of the beast, or the number of his name. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred three score and six. And I looked, and lo, in the midst of this beast, I saw as it were a lamb that stood on the Mount Zion. And with him were those of the hundred forty and four thousand, having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard a voice as if it came from heaven, even as the voice of many waters, and also the voice of a great thunder. And the sounds I heard were like unto the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song to them, but before the throne, and before the four beasts, and the four and twenty elders, the song was not new. And no man could learn that song but those of the hundred and forty and four thousand, which were redeemed from the earth. These are they which were not defiled with the woman who sits upon the beast. For they remain as virgins, committing no fornication with her. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth.
These are the redeemed from among men, and are the firstfruits unto God and to the Lamb. And in their mouth was found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. And I saw an angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth, to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Behold those who fear God and give glory to him. For the hour of your judgment is come. For ye worship not him that made heaven and earth, and the sea, and the fountains of waters. And there followed another angel, saying, Babylon is falling, is falling, even that great city, because she makes all nations that partake of her fornication drink of the wine of the wrath of God. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, If any man worship the beast and his image, and receive his mark in his forehead, or in his hand, the same shall drink from a cup of wine, which is a mixture of the wrath of God and his indignation, which is poured out upon the earth. And he who shall drink thereof shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment shall ascend up before God for ever and ever. And they shall have no rest day nor night who worship the beast and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, because they shall rest from their labors, because their works follow them. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And upon the cloud one sat like unto the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown, and in his hand a sharp sickle. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, thrust in thy sickle, and reap for the time is come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth is ripe. And he that sat on the cloud thrust in his sickle on the earth, and began to reap the earth. And when he stopped reaping for a season, another angel came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle like unto the first. And another angel came out from the altar, which had power over fire, and cried with a loud cry to the first that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle, and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth, for her grapes are fully ripe. And the one like unto the Son of Man thrust in his sickle into the earth, and gathered the vine of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And the winepress was trodden without the holy city, and blood came out of the winepress, even unto the horse bridles, by the space of a thousand to six hundred furlongs. And after these things, I saw another sign in heaven in the likeness of those things upon the earth. And great and marvelous were these things. And I beheld, as it were, seven servants having power over the seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of God. And I saw as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire, and upon it stood those seven servants who had gotten the victory over the beast, and over his image, and over his mark, and over the number of his name. And as they played their harps, they sang the song of God. And they sing the song of Moses, the servant of God, which is the psalm of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. For we shall not fear thee, O Lord, and shall glorify thy name with our song. For thou art holy, and all nations shall come and worship before thee. For thy judgments are made manifest unto us. And after I had beheld these things, I looked, and behold, inside the temple in heaven, the tabernacle of the testimony was opened. And the seven servants came out of the temple, having power over the seven plagues, clothed in pure and white linen, and having their breasts girded with golden girdles. And one of the four beasts gave unto the seven servants seven golden vials full of the wrath of God, who liveth for ever and ever. And the temple was filled with smoke, 
and all were blinded from the glory of God and from his power. And no man was able to enter into the temple because of the smoke till the seven plagues of the seven servants were fulfilled. And I heard a great voice out of the temple saying to the seven servants, Go your ways, and pour out the vials of the wrath of God upon the earth. And the first went his way, and poured out his vial upon the earth. And there fell noisome and grievous sores upon the men which had the mark of the beast, and upon them which worshipped his image. And the second servant poured out his vial upon the sea, and it became as the blood of a dead man. And every living soul died in the sea. And the third servant poured out his vial upon the rivers and fountains of waters. And they also became as the blood of a dead man. And I heard the servant who poured out his vial upon these waters say, Thou art righteous, O Lord, which art, and wast, and shalt be, because thou hast judged them by their works. For they have shed the blood of saints and prophets, and thou hast given them blood to drink, for they are worthy. And I heard another voice out of the altar say, Even so, Lord God Almighty, true and righteous are thy judgments. And the fourth servant poured out his vial upon the sun, and power was given unto him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, who hath power over these plagues, but they repented not to give him glory. And the fifth servant poured out his vial upon the seat of the beast, and his kingdom was full of darkness. And they gnawed their tongues for pain, and blasphemed the God of heaven because of their pains and their sores, but still they repented not of their deeds. And the sixth servant poured out his vial upon the great river Euphrates. And the water thereof was dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. And because the water was dried up, I saw three unclean spirits like unto frogs, come out of the mouth of the dragon, and out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are the spirits of devils, which work miracles, and go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world, gathering them for the battle of that great day of God Almighty. If any man have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith, Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth, and keepeth his garments upon him, lest he walk naked and see his own shame. And they were gathered together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon. And the seventh servant poured out his vial into the air. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent. And men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail. For the plague thereof was exceeding great. And after the seven plagues of the seven servants were fulfilled, I heard great voices and thunders and lightnings coming out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth, so mighty an earthquake, and so great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell. And great Babylon came in remembrance before God, to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. And every mountain fled away, and the islands were not found. And there came one of the four beasts, which had the seven vials, which were given to the seven servants, and talked with me, saying unto me, Come hither. I will show unto thee the judgment of the great whore that sitteth upon many waters, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, who are the inhabitants of the earth, who have been made drunk with the wine of the cup of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, where I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast, full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads with seven crowns and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And upon her forehead was a name written mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. 
and I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints, who are the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration because of her glory and her beauty. And the angel said unto me, Wherefore didst thou marvel? Thou knowest not the mystery of the woman, and of the beast that carrieth her, which hath the seven heads with crowns and ten horns. Behold, I will tell thee the beast that thou sawest was, and is not, and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit, and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder after the beast, whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world, when they behold the beast that was, and is not, and yet is. And here is the mind which hath wisdom and understanding the seven heads are seven mountains, on which the woman sitteth. And the seven crowns are seven kings, five are fallen, and one is, and the other is not yet come, and when he cometh, he must continue a short space. And the eighth is of the seventh, and receives its power from the beast that was, and is not, and yet is, and which goeth into perdition. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power from the beast as kings for the last hour with the eighth. These all have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. These shall make war with those who follow the Lamb, and those who follow the Lamb shall overcome them, for they know the Lamb is Lord of lords and King of kings. And they that follow him are called and chosen and faithful. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast, these shall cause the peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues to hate the whore. And they shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and they shall burn her with fire. For the beast hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will. And these agree with the eighth, and give their kingdom unto him, until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest is that great city, which reigneth over all the kings of the earth. And after these things, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power over fire, that by the flame of his fire, the earth might be lightened with the glory of God. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon the great is fallen, is fallen, and is become the habitation of devils, and the hold of every foul spirit, and a cage of every unclean and hateful bird. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, and the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her, and the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. And I heard another voice as if it came from heaven, saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. For her sins have reached even unto the God of heaven, and she shall remember her iniquities in the day of judgment. For when the Lamb cometh, he shall reward her even as she rewarded you, and recompense double unto her according to her works, and the cup which she hath filled, it shall be filled to her double. How much she hath glorified herself, and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen, and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Therefore shall her plagues be manifested in the day of the Lord death, and mourning, and famine. And she shall be utterly burned with fire. For strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. And the kings of the earth, who have committed fornication and lived deliciously with her, shall bewail her, and lament for her, when they shall see the smoke of her burning. And these shall stand afar off fearing her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city! For in one day is thy judgment come. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her. For no man buyeth their merchandise any more the merchandise of gold and silver and precious stones, and of pearls and fine linen, and purple and silk and scarlet, 
and all fine wood, and all manner vessels of ivory, and all manner vessels of most precious wood, and of brass and iron and marble, and cinnamon and odors and ointments, and frankincense and wine and oil, and fine flour and wheat, and beasts and sheep and horses, and chariots and slaves and souls of men. And the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee, and all things which were dainty and goodly are departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things, which were made rich by her, shall stand afar off for the fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great harlot that was clothed in fine linen, and purple and scarlet, and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, yea, even that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. For in one day so great riches is come to naught. And every shipmaster, and all the company and ships and sailors, and as many as trade by sea, stood afar off, and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads, and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city, wherein were made rich all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one day is she made desolate. And I saw in the likeness of things upon earth, a mighty angel in heaven take up a stone like a great millstone, and hang it about her neck, and cast her into the sea, saying, Because of her violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down, and shall be found no more at all. And the voice of harpers, and musicians, and of pipers, and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee. And no craftsman, of whatsoever craft he be, shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of a candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more at all in thee. For thy merchants were the great men of the earth, for by thy sorceries were all nations deceived. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of saints, and of all that were slain upon the earth. Rejoice over her, all ye who are in heaven, and all ye upon the earth who have heeded the words of the holy apostles and prophets, for God shall avenge you on her. And after these things I heard as it were the voice of a great multitude in heaven, saying, Alleluia. Salvation and glory and honor and power unto the Lord our God. And the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world stood before the throne with the book of life in his right hand. And the Lamb said, True and righteous are thy judgments, O Lord God Almighty. For thou hast judged the great whore, which did corrupt the earth with her fornication, and now thou must avenge the blood of thy servants at her hand. And again, the voice of a great multitude said, Alleluia and Amen. And the smoke of her torment rose up for ever and ever. And the four and twenty elders and the four beasts and the lamb fell down and worshipped God that sat on the throne, saying, Alleluia and Amen. And the voice of the lamb came out of the throne, saying, Praise our God, all ye his servants, and ye that fear him not, both small and great. And I heard the voice of a great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and also as the voice of mighty thunderings, saying, Alleluia and Amen, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice, and give honor to him. For the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. Behold, I am the bridegroom prepared for my wife. And to those bidden to the marriage was granted that they should be arrayed in fine linen, clean and white. For the fine linen is the righteousness of saints. And he which spoke saith unto me, Write these truths, for blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. And he saith unto me, These shall know the true sayings of God which he has hidden from them from the foundation of the world. And then I knew with whom I spoke, and I fell at his feet to worship him. And he said unto me, See thou do it not. I am thy fellow servant, 
and of thy brethren that have the testimony which I gave unto you in the flesh as the man Jesus. Worship God for that which he hath given you through me, for he who hath a testimony of that which I did as the man Jesus in the flesh hath the spirit of prophecy. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse, and he that rode had a book in his right hand, which had the seven seals, six already open, and one left. And he that spoke with me sat there upon, and was called faithful and true. And in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes are as a flame of fire, and on his head are many crowns. And he has a name written that no man knows, but he himself. And he is clothed with a vesture dipped in his own blood, and the blood of those who were killed upon the altar, and his name is called the Word of God. And the armies, which are in heaven, followed him upon white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, even the word of God, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the fruit of the vine with fierceness, which is in the winepress of wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and under his thigh a name written King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun. And he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls of the air, Come and gather yourselves together unto the supper of the great God, and eat the flesh of the Lamb which was slain for you that ye no longer eat the flesh of kings, and the flesh of captains, and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses, and of them that sit on them, nor the flesh of any man, free or bond, small or great. And I saw the beast, and the kings of the earth, and their captains, and their mighty men, and their armies, gathered together to make war against him that sat on the horse, and against his army. And when he had opened the seventh seal, the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet that wrought miracles before him, with which the beast deceived them that had received his mark, and them that worshipped his image. These both were cast alive into a lake of fire burning with brimstone. And the remnant of the beast and the false prophet, even all those from whose flesh the fowls of the air were filled, were slain with the sword of him that sat upon the horse, which sword proceeded out of his mouth. And in the likeness of things upon the earth, I saw an angel come down from heaven having a great chain in his hand. And he took the key to the bottomless pit from the star which had fallen unto the earth, which is the devil and Satan. And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, and bound him with the great chain for a thousand years. And cast him into the bottomless pit and locked it up and set a seal upon it that the dragon should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, but after that he must be loosed a little season. And I saw the dead upon the earth, and the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus, and for the word of God, and who had chosen not to worship the beast, neither his image, neither receive his mark upon their foreheads, or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. And I saw as it were thrones which were given them of Christ. And they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto the world because of them. And the dead were raised by the power of the Lamb. But the rest of the dead, who were the remnant that chose to continue to worship the beast and his image and his mark, will not live again until the thousand years are finished. This is the first death. Blessed and holy is he that hath part in the first resurrection, for on such the second death shall have no power, but they shall be priests of God and his Christ, and shall reign with him a thousand years. And when the thousand years are expired, the dragon shall be loosed out of his prison with those who followed him. And they are as Gog and Magog, and shall go out again to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. And all the inhabitants of the earth, the number of which is as the sand of the sea, shall be gathered together to battle. And the armies of Gog shall go up on the breadth of the earth, and compass the camp of the saints about, and the beloved city. 
and I saw fire come down from God out of heaven, and devour them who fought against the Lamb. And the devil, who was the dragon that deceived them, was cast into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are, who are tormented day and night for ever and ever. And I saw a great white throne, and him that sat on it, from whose face the earth fled away. And the veil that covered the host of heaven dissolved, and heaven was rolled together as a scroll. And there was found no place for those who had been cast into the lake of fire and brimstone. And I saw the quick and the dead, small and great, stand before the Lamb of God. And the books were opened, and another book was opened, which is the book of life. And all were judged out of those things which were written in the books, according to their works. And the sea gave up the quick which were in it, and death and hell delivered up the dead which were in them. And all were judged, every man according to their works. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. This is the second death. And then are death and hell cast into the lake of fire. I saw as it were a new heaven and a new earth, because the first heaven and the first earth were passed away. For the earth had fled, and the mountains thereof, and there were no more isles of the sea. And first John saw in the heavens a likeness of the holy city, a new Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the marriage is complete. The tabernacle of God is now with men, and the Lamb will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and his word shall be with them and be their God instead of wood and stone. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying. Neither shall there be any more pain. For the former things are passed away, and all things have become new even new heavens and a new earth. And he that stood before the throne said, Behold, I make all things new by the word of God. And he said unto me, Write this word is true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am the Christ, Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh this world shall inherit all things, and I will make him a son of God. But those who are the fearful and unbelieving, and the abominable and murderers, and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters, and all liars who shall not forsake these things, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, and upon whom the second death will have power. And there came unto me one of the four beasts, which had the seven vials which were given to the seven servants who had power over the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither. I will shew thee the bride, who is now the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and shewed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God. And her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal, and had a wall great and high, and had twelve gates. And at the gates, twelve cherubim by which all must pass whose names are written thereon, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel, on the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city, and the gates thereof, and the wall thereof. And the city leath four square, and the length is as large as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, twelve thousand furlongs. The length and the breadth and the height of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, an hundred and forty and four thousand cubits, according to the measure of a man's arm that is, and not of the golden reed of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was done of jasper and emerald. 
and the city was overlaid with pure gold, the streets like unto clear glass. And the foundations of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first to garnish the foundations was jasper, the second, onyx, the third, a barrel, the fourth, an amethyst, the fifth, agate, the sixth, ligure, the seventh, diamond, the eighth, sapphire, the ninth, an emerald, the tenth, a carbuncle, the eleventh, a topaz, the twelfth, a sardius. And the twelve gates were as twelve pearls, each of the gates was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold, as it were transparent glass. And I saw no temple therein, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are the temple of it. And there was found no darkness in the city, and it had no need of the moon to shine in it and reflect the light of the sun. For the glory of God did lighten it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And the nations of them which are saved shall walk in the light of it. And no longer shall the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. But they which are saved shall bring the glory and honor of all nations into it. And the gates of it shall not be shut at all by day, and there shall be no night there. And there shall in no wise enter into it anything that defileth, neither whatsoever worketh abomination, or mocketh a lie, but only they whose names are written in the Lamb's book of life. And the Son of Man appeared before me, and he shewed me a pure river of the water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the kingdom of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month according to its seasons, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse because of th. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true, and have been hidden from the foundation of the world because of the wickedness of men. But the Lord God, who called the holy prophets, and who sent his angels to shew unto his servants all things which must shortly come to pass, hath commanded his prophets to write these things and seal them up until the last days before I come again into the world. Behold, I am Jesus Christ, the Son of God, and I come quickly. Therefore, blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophets who have sealed up the prophecy of this book. And first John saw these things, and heard them. And when I had heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of him who shewed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not, but worship God who hath sent me, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. And this book doth not teach a man to fall down and worship another, but it teacheth a man to worship God and keep his commandments in all things, and these are those things which have been sealed up to come forth unto the children of men. And he saith unto me, Therefore, seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book any longer, for the time is at hand when it shall come to pass that kings shall shut their mouths. For that which had not been told them shall they see, and that which they had not heard shall they consider. And these things shall be preached upon the housetops to all the people. And there shall be no more excuse for the wickedness of a man. And he that is unjust, let him be unjust still in that which he believeth. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still in those works which he doeth. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still in the works that he hath chosen for himself to do. And he that is holy, let him be holy still, and stand in a holy place, and wait for me to come. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according as his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last, and have revealed all things unto my servants, the prophets, that they might preach repentance and teach men the commandments of God. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the holy city, which is the kingdom of God. For without, 
are those men who are like dogs, who ceaselessly bark unto others of their own, and sorcerers who deceive others and set themselves up as a source of light, and whoremongers who are led by the lusts of their hearts, and also the murderers and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and mocketh a lie. I, Jesus, have been sent by God to send forth mine servants to testify of these things in the churches that have been set up among men. And this have I commanded them to testify unto the people, that I am the root and the offspring of David, and the bright and morning star. I am he who hath sent forth the word of God by my own mouth, and by the power of the Spirit, and who hath come to prepare the bride for the wedding, and who saith, Come unto me. And to him that heareth I say, Come and partake of the living waters, which are the words that I have spoken and given unto the world. And let him that is a thirst come. And whosoever will, let him come also and take the water of life freely so that he shall never thirst. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of life given in the words of prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. For in these things which are written, ye shall know of that which must surely come to pass upon the earth. And if any man shall take away from the words of life given in the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life, and he shall be kept out of the holy city, and from the holy thing. He which hath testified of these things, saith, Surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. Tasharaphna is me J. This concludes John's Revelation Unfolded Appendix 1.